Hello, friends. Let us start with a prayer. This lecture is a re-recording of a standing ovation or for record five minutes that I was given last week when I gave this lecture to a packed house. And there is a continuous demand from all over to give a link to this lecture so that people can access it afterwards. I am leaving my email here so that if you have any queries, you can please email me and I will reply for sure. You will take time to process the contents of this lecture. Therefore, I am leaving my email. Friends, this is not a lecture which I am giving as a life coach. I have not such illusions. I am neither a mentor nor a guide. Actually, this is a semi-autobiographical lecture which I am sharing with you where my experiences, my philosophy and actions that have helped not only me but millions of others throughout the world I am sharing so that it may also help you. Sharing because we are caring. It comes not from one source but many sources. Therefore, don't try to find it at one source. Why is this not a self-help lecture? Because this lecture doesn't help you to be materially successful. Self-help lectures by and large are for earning more money, getting bigger name and fame, getting a higher post, getting more and more promotions. No, this will absolutely not help you into any of these. Instead, this lecture will help you to be more happy. As they say in Gujarati, more khush. Be more joyful. Happiness and joy are two different things. Happiness usually needs an external source. Joy doesn't need an external source. It comes from within. You must have experienced it many times. You are just sitting at some place or standing at some place and for no reason you feel a thrill. You feel a beautiful feeling passing through you. And that leaves a smile on your face. That's joy. This lecture will surely help you to be more at peace, be more satisfied. And if you try, then all the tenets which I'm going to share with you here will help you to leave vibrations where somebody will tell you that when we see you, we feel we are at home. This is, a, I feel, one of the highest appreciation which you can get. I have faced this, not faced this, I have, I have been blessed with this many times. When people tell, sir, when we meet you, we feel we, we are at home. We forget all our challenges, our travels, our tribulations. We feel we are at home, at peace, and a source of joy. This lecture can help you to get something like that. And therefore, I have labeled it as the new you. 
सूरज की बाहों में अब है ये जिंदगी किरने है सांसों में बातों में रोशनी Through this lecture, let us find the new you. And for this, I will tell you a story. This is a story of two buckets. One which was flawless, the other which was leaking. Ashamed of its flaw, the leaking bucket always made it back half empty. Whenever the farmer took her, both of them to, uh, to collect water, she would return home half empty and the flawless bucket would re reach home full. Because of this embarrassment, the farmer one day started a conversation with them. He told the imperfect bucket, have you noticed that the beautiful flowers have sprung up on the side of the path where you are carried and on the opposite side of the flawless bucket, there is nothing but earth and stones. And we have seen this many times. The farmer also tells that I specifically took you planted seeds and took you on the side where I had planted the seeds because I knew that because of this flaw of yours, you will make the plants and the seeds grow. Over the last few years, I have been picking some of those flowers and decorating my house with them or offering it to God. Without you, I would never have been able to surround myself with such beauty. Hearing this, the perfect bucket, which was always thinking itself to be a shade higher, was completely lost for words. It started looking at the bucket, which was imperfect, with great jealousy. So this is the question of attitude. A different perspective. What you are seeing on the screen? The figure to the left of yours is seeing a figure, a, a, a number six, and to the right is seeing number nine. Actually, it is the same, but the perspectives are different. Like the crack in the bucket, each defect in us is at the same time a virtue. We always gain something by every loss. Believe me, this type of defect or imperfection I will introduce that word now to you. What people call as imperfection, which actually is a defect, is very essential. I'm going to share two pictures with you. Just look at this picture. You may feel such a beautiful picture. But imagine if this was monotonously only green, or only red, orange, or only red, would you have liked it? Everything green, the water also green, the box also green, the rock covered with green moss, everything green. Think, that would have been perfect, yes. But because this is imperfect, 
you find it beautiful. Now see this. See the beautiful saris which these beautiful ladies are wearing. I'm sure you will all be thinking, oh, such costly and beautiful saris. These cost or these are saris is because of their imperfections, because of their leaks. And what have they leaked? The color monotony has been leaked out. Imagine this sari to your extreme left was only pink in color or red like that, like it's pallu. Or the, in the second picture, it was only yellow. Only yellow, same monotonous yellow. And so on for all the other two. Would you have liked it? No, you would not. But because there is an imperfection, you find these sari is beautiful and you find that they are worth paying such high price for. So what I wanted to tell, when you want to be a new you, be comfortable with your imperfections. Imperfection is like a parasmani, as they call in Sanskrit, a touchstone. Your most beautiful happenings and individuals of your life, close your eyes and think, they have all been imperfect. Perfection, believe me, is very boring and constricting. Everything perfect. Every, you see quite a few films which I saw. After some time I got bored. I would not name it, name the film making house. But so-called very sanskari filmmaking house. Everything was always perfect. The boy, the hero, the protagonist was perfect. The lady was perfect. After some time, you find it boring. Very constricting. Constricting. I stopped watching their films. As soon as you are comfortable with imperfections of yourself, also of yourself, as well as the world, see how happy you instantly become. I am imperfect. I accept it. All your struggles, all your anguishes are for your imperfections. Also, just recollect the situations in your life. And not only your life, during your day, when you lost your cool, when you became angry, and mark my words, they were essentially those situations where you did not expect something and it happened. And what was your expectation? Always our expectation is perfection. The train should reach in time. The flight should reach in time. I should get the best seat. Nobody should miss me when I arrive at the airport of the train so that I can quickly load myself into the car and I am taken to wherever I have to be taken. But it doesn't happen that way. The flight train can get delayed. The flight can get delayed. The person who came to receive you at the airport can miss you. And you get angry. Because these are imperfections. If you are not losing anything much, if no life is harmed, then why do you have this face? Be comfortable with your imperfections. All angers and all your intolerances are due to imperfection. If you are comfortable with imperfection, your anger has no business to be there. If it arises, whenever the anger arises, just think of Wabi Sabi. And what is Wabi Sabi? The powerful tool to dissolve your anger. It's a beautiful Japanese wisdom. There is an entire book on this. The wisdom of imperfection. It's a very practical Japanese philosophy. It gives you instant peace and evolves you by miles. And how to be comfortable with imperfections because over centuries, over eons, human beings have programmed themselves for perfection. How to become comfortable then with something which has touched your DNA? 
how to be comfortable with imperfections. There is a wonderful method for this. Wonderful way to handle your imperfection. Three, two powerful words in English. No problem. The flight is late, sir. No problem. Sir, your form for uh, for buying those shares was rejected because your signature did not match. No problem. We'll buy it tomorrow. Oh, sir, you missed your train. No problem. We will not go. There is a Gujarati word for that. Kai Vado name. Gujarati phrase. Beautiful. No problem. Now I am introducing you to a second virtue which can make you, or we will say a tool which can make you very much new. And that is becoming aware of your distractors. Continuously we have distractors spinning us. And one of our biggest distractor is this black box, your mobile phone. Now just go inside your conscience and just tell yourself if this applies to you. See this video. Do you with every ring of a phone do this? What? <laughs> Do you run like this? Do you jump like this? You are on a dinner table and suddenly the phone rings. <laughs> what is your response? You are driving a car, you are driving a bike and the phone rings. What is your response? I have seen my driver, my cars, who is with us for the last three decades. He never picks up the phone Whosoever may be ringing up when he is driving the car. I have not told him anything, but he is compatible with his distractors. A phone call is not an imperial command to talk with the caller. It is not the prime minister or the president of this country ringing you up that you should run from whatever you are doing and even sometimes endanger your own life and talk on the phone. It is just a request by the someone on the opposite end that please, sir or ma'am, I want to talk with you. You don't run for it. They also don't tell you to run for it. Whenever you are comfortable and safe, pick up the phone or ring them up back. Just think, is this black shining rectangle box becoming your a black hole? Black hole is where the gravity is so powerful that even time and light is pulled in by in physics, in the cosmos. Even light gets in and therefore that third hole is black. Is this black shining rectangle box becoming your black hole? I personally have started putting my phone out of sight when not required. When my mind is even slightly resisting a task, it will start looking at the phone. I started looking at my smartphone for what it really is and, I, and could make out that it is a distractor. In this way, there are so many distractors, tools and human beings in your life. Eliminate them. This will improve your focus and awareness. We come to the third <coughs> Very powerful tool. There are only four we are going to discuss. We come to the third. Very powerful tool to make you new. And that is generating a sense, a powerful mantra of what we call as Santosh. Santosh, I will keep it even in Hindi, it is this word is there in Sanskrit, it's there. Santosha. It is a very powerful word. It comes from two essential feelings going together. Appreciation of what you have at the moment and gratitude. Immediately you will think that if you are Santoshi, you become complacent. Not at all. It doesn't promote laziness. Appreciation or Santosh of what at this moment 
tomorrow when you are going to your work you are going to work hard towards your goals towards accomplishing things which you have planned fine work hard work in whatever way demand but today at this moment and many times at that that moment if you can enjoy oh i am fine i have got everything kal ki baat kal kal ki baat aaj ki ho oh i still require this much money oh i lost so much money in shares i lost this much money in this deal but then do i have enough yes i have at this moment is it okay yes how santosh you instantly metamorphose into your very happy self it no way pulls you down from working hard tomorrow but one thing is sure it will pull you out of a race a rat race and still be able to achieve milestones which you want you will enjoy your successes not because there are hundred people on social media coming and telling you congratulations for whatever but these are the points which you internally will feel okay i have got it i have achieved and you are happy about it so therefore they say get out of the rat rat race and this beautiful small paragraph i read and i am bringing it here it was regarding somebody and said that she silently stepped out of the race that she never wanted to be in most of the times we are forced into a race because somebody else is in it he must be right therefore i join that race suppose somebody is doing this i will do it no i will do it if i want to do it get out of the race which you never want to be in find your own lane and you will proceed to win i know when i left a very big organization i was told what will you do and today after near, nearly 18 years of living that organization or so as some around 17 18 years i run short of time i was never in the race then why i was wasting my time there whatever i had to achieve i achieved thank god santosh but not in the race anymore as a result i am able to find time to learn spanish currently for last more than 600 days without missing a single day i am learning spanish i am learning zumba dance at this age i already learned it i won't say i'm quite proficient but i can at least get a b grade in an exam of zumba dance and since last few days i have started learning about ai artificial intelligence in for my day to day life i have been no race i would not have been able to achieve this if i would have uh, been in any race because i would have been focused to some mundane goals and that brought me to a very powerful mantra i will share that mantra with you though the mantra is in gujarati i will translate it instantly into english because this video is going on youtube and there will be many people who are non gujaratis who will be listening it though in the original lecture i had given it in gujarati i will first read in gujarati and then instantly translate maru man viprit sthiti ma pan shant rahi shakto hoy hu gas gasat ungi shakto ho ane khadkhada dhasi sakta if we are in adverse times i am able to keep my balance if i can sleep peacefully and laugh heartily like this can you laugh such heartily i can i have seen it so much so that some people get attracted i remember the other day we were flying somewhere and my wife was with me and i she cracked the joke and i laughed like this and she said what are you doing the air hostess is looking at you i said that is the plan 
if I am feeling hungry, if I am feeling tired, if I do not have any big disease, if I have no debt on my head, if I have one house, another roof of which I can sit and eat my simple daily food on a peaceful Sunday evening. I can get along and collect with my some few selected friends and pass that evening in great joy, then I can only say, thank you God. Thank you God, you have given me much more than what I deserve. And if this is going to happen till the last day, then at the end of my life I will tell, oh, what a place it was to live this life. Friends, these are the original words of, the, of a very famous author of Gujarati, Chandratan Bakshi, which I might have translated them. But they are very powerful and very relevant. And the last mantra which I will share with you is respect the power of time. Time is ruthless. All your name all your fame, all your glory, all your isms, all your complexes are going to go out in time. There was a very, very powerful, very beautiful word, a beautiful film by the name of Natasamara. I know that the previous, this is the second version of not the second season, second uh, uh, remake of the film. In the first original film was played by the character was played by Sri Ram Lagu, Dr. Sri Ram Lagu. And it is well known that Sri Ram Lagu had to take a psychological support. He got so involved in this. And it is quite understandable because after this, seeing this film, Nata Samrat, where Nana Patekar plays this role, my wife and I came out stunned. I just couldn't speak because I was so mesmerized, both of us, by his acting. The messages which he was delivering. And one of them was, now Karacha Bhakshai. And my wife said, after this film, Nana should stop acting. He has reached such a height which may never be paralleled. Your name is going is a victim of time. Time is a humongous consumer of your name. We just eat it away. It ruthlessly eats up your name. Just think of five generations of your parents. Do you remember them? You are because of them. On both sides, how many names do you remember? I don't. Beyond my father, my grandfather, great-grandfather, and great-great-grandfather, I don't remember any names. There must be there on both sides. I don't remember them at all. I have not been informed. I have not been told. I have not been taught about them. Everybody has forgotten. Therefore, don't aim for name and fame. They just don't matter. What lives on are those small parts of you which all of the world comes in touch with you will take from you. Suppose you are having some seva activity or some virtuous activity. People are watching you. Your children are watching you. Your friends are watching you. If there are certain good things from you, they will take it. And they will not take your name. Today, if I have these ideas, if I love to share these ideas, do you think this is mine? 
It must have come from my parents, my great grandparents, my grandparents, somewhere or the other, that you should share good ideas. Ideas which have got, which have helped you. Over a period of time, if you have lived a bad life, after you are, you are gone, you will be remembered only as, oh no, he was not a good man. This was spoken about one of my fathers and that, that touched me. My fathers about generation. Oh, that he, he was not a good man. But when it came to discussion about my grandfather, he was remembered and cherished by so many people not related to us from our village when they used to come and meet us. His name is now gone. But I saw those virtues duplicating or replicating themselves in my father and therefore my mother. And then after in me, my brother, my children, my wife, our spouses, my brother's wife, everyone has those virtues. And I'm seeing them. They are, nobody acknowledges them. Their name is gone. But these beautiful ideas, they are taken. And these ideas are immortal. These will be discussed and propagated. And this is your immortality. As time passes, your ideas, like your name, like the crushed flowers in a hand, petals of a flower in your hand, will go away. But the fragrance are your ideas. They will spread everywhere. Rahe na rahe, The new you, yourself, will now know that my immortality is not in my name or my body. My immortality is what in what I give to others, what I share with others, my ideas, the way I have lived life, that is my immortality. Therefore, the new you will live a valued life, a sanskari life, and others will follow. Let us leave virtuous ideas which will continue to touch lives for generations to follow behind. Wherever you are in a family or neighborhood or wherever, leave such ideas behind. Without hankering that they will be followed, not necessary. Anything good will be taken up. And surely their ideas will become immortal. And that is the immortality of the new you.
wishing you an immortal new you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. <laughs>